Today's lecture is on nervous system infections. So a couple of terms you guys should know. Um, meningitis is inflammation of the meninges. Encephalitis is inflammation of the brain. And meningoencephalitis is inflammation of both the brain and the meninges. So we have two uh, main segments of our nervous system. One is the peripheral nervous system, and the other is the central nervous system. So any microbes that are within the nervous system are considered to be abnormal. So if we take a look, guys, um, we have microbes that are always found in our digestive tract, and some of them can actually influence the nervous system. So again, um, different kinds of neurotransmitters can be actually uh, produced in when our food are broken down by our normal microbiota. Um, but something that you should keep in mind, guys, that stress and some other types of diseases can actually cause different types of neurotransmitters to be produced. So being under stress, which a lot of us are now, is not a good thing because it can actually alter a little bit of brain function. So meninges, guys, I'm going to go through this kind of quick. You should have had it during A and P. Um, you have three different layers, the dura mater, arachnomater, and the pia mater. And a very, very important uh, component that I'd like you to know for your test, guys, is the blood-brain barrier. And the blood-brain barrier, guys, the key thing I'd like you to know about that, will actually filter out things, and one of the things that it can filter out is microbes. So it keeps microbes away from uh, getting into the brain. So in order to get past that barrier, though, there are some different types of microbes that produce uh, toxins and virulence factors, etc., that allow them to get into our central nervous system. So a couple of uh, different vocabulary words here, guys. Anytime you, you see the word cytolytic, it means that it can cause cells to break down. Zoonosis, any disease that is transmitted from animals to humans. And systemic, that's your, your whole body, guys. So this infection can then uh, be carried through your bloodstream and go throughout your body. Now, there's different types of paralysis. I'd also like you to know flaccid means that uh, your muscles can't contract. So actually, you are very relaxed when that happens. Symmetric paralysis will affect both sides of the body, and asymmetric will only affect one side of the body or another. So a very um, interesting type of viral infection, guys, that can affect our nervous system is called polio. Now, in your uh, vaccination post, some of you mentioned uh, the polio vaccine, and we don't see much of this anymore. Uh, but polio is caused by the polio virus. And if you see this... Uh, little guy here, what you can see is that he's got braces on, crutches, so it can actually cause a type of paralysis. So again, for people who don't want to get vaccinated, this is why the vaccine was, was developed, because in the 50s, 40s, and 50s, guys, we saw a lot of polio cases throughout the world. Now again, pre-vaccine, uh, 35,000 cases per year, Post-vaccine, we did not see any cases. Look at that, guys. From the 50s to 1979, went down to zero. But there are still parts of the world that polio is uh, seen today. Rabies, please know, guys, is caused by a rabies virus. This is considered a classic type of zoonosis. So again, one that can be transmitted from animals to humans. Now, other types of uh, agents that can cause encephalitis are called arboviral encephalitis and meningitis uh, types of viruses. And a good example of one of these guys, what we call an arbovirus, is West Nile. So again, guys, please know that West Nile is an arbo type of virus and can be transmitted 
uh, via mosquitoes. Now, some more vocabulary words for you guys. Spastic paralysis, that means that you have the inability to relax your muscles. So they stay tense. Toxemia is when you have uh, toxins that are in your blood. And a serotype is actually a group of related microbes that share a common antigen. And again, guys, antigens are usually found on the surface and uh, they're used for detection and diagnosis. Just to put this in uh, perspective on what's going on now, guys, uh, the people who are researching uh, COVID-19 are looking for uh, different antigens that could be used in formulating uh, a vaccine. Now, when we look at meningitis, uh, bacteria uh, very seldom will cause uh, meningitis, but it does happen. So about 20% of meningitis is caused by bacteria. And people who do get that uh, can have brain damage, hearing loss, etc. There's actually an 11% mortality rate, guys, even with treatment for those who have bacterial types of meningitis. Now, neonatal meningitis, that obviously affects infants uh, within the first 28 days of being born. And these are the three types of bacteria uh, that can actually cause uh, neonatal types of meningitis. Now, haemophilus meningitis, please know, is caused by haemophilus influenza. This is a gram-negative bacteria, okay? Gram-negative bacteria. Now, interestingly, um, this is common uh, in a lot of people. It's a normal type of microbiota. However, if you become immunosuppressed for whatever reason, this can actually cause meningitis. Now, haemophilus meningitis, if there's complications involved, will actually kill patients that are untreated. So it's a very important one for us to know. Uh, antibiotics can treat this, guys. But even with antibiotics, uh, kids who get this are usually going to die. About 3 to 6% of them will actually die. So, for your test, know that meningococcal meningitis is caused by Neisseria meningitis. This is a gram-negative aerobe. So, guys, you know what gram-negative means? Aerobe means that it likes air. So about 10% of the population carries this as part of their normal nose and throat microbiota. And here's an example of uh, the meningitis here, guys. It looks more like a rash, but you can see inflammation, etc. because, again, the meninges are actually inflamed. So with pneumococcal meningitis, and I apologize for this small font, guys, but please note that pneumococcal meningitis is the leading cause of bacterial meningitis according to the NIH. Pneumococcal meningitis, leading cause of bacterial meningitis according to the NIH. And this table just shows different age groups and what normally cause the type of bacterial meningitis. So um, bacteria can also affect your uh, peripheral nervous system. One disease I'd like you to be aware of, uh, you may have heard of leprosy, yeah, but it's also known as Hansen's disease. Please know it's caused by Mycobacterium leprae. It's an acid fast bacillus. So that means it has mycolic acid. This one will grow at an optimal temperature between 30 and 35 degrees C. So it's estimated that in 2015, there were about uh, 212,000 cases worldwide. There's two forms that I'd like you to know for your exam. Please know that the tuberculoid form is not very contagious. And that's this here. If you take a look, guys, it looks like a little discoloration in the skin. However, the lepromatis form can spread to others. This is the one where your digits actually start to erode. Please upload this particular slide uh, to your 
uh, Dropbox, guys. Take a pic, upload it. Now, toxins are something we have to be aware of, guys, so let's go through some of those. Um, one bacteria you should always know about is Clostridium uh, botulinum. It causes botulism. Please know that this particular microbe produces neurotoxins, and it produces what we call a botulinum toxin that causes flaccid paralysis. Again, Clostridium botulinum will produce neurotoxins, so this botulinum toxin causes flaccid paralysis. Think Botox. Tetanus, guys, also known as lockjaw, is caused by Clostridium tetani. Please know that it produces tetanospasmin. So this is, a again, a type of toxin that's produced. So please know all of this bolded information here. Titanospasmin moves in peripheral motor neurons and is transported to the spinal cord. It blocks the release of inhibitory neurotransmitters, prevents muscle relaxation, and will cause spastic paralysis. Fungi are something else that can cause problems in our central nervous system. Uh, crypto Toxis is one type of a fungus that has been shown to cause a lot of problems, especially in HIV or AIDS patients. Um, and it's transmitted in bird droppings. Protozoa um, are another type of microbe that can cause serious uh, nervous system infections. Um, there's one called Tritanosoma brucei that causes African sleeping sickness. Another one I'd like you to know, guys, is toxoplasmosis. So know this one. It's caused by toxoplasma gondii. And it can be found in cat feces. So women who are pregnant have to be careful not to clean a litter box. So again, in pregnant women, it will cause or can cause miscarriage or stillbirth. Prions, guys, can cause what's called spongiform encephalopathy. Spongiform encephalopathy, again, is caused by, or can be caused by, prions.